Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I promised to document the mounting of my Starlink dish on my roof, so that's exactly what this video is about. Now, if you're wondering how we got to this point, you can see my whole Starlink journey from start to finish in the videos I'll link below in the description. I did an initial unboxing and review, a six week in review, I did a video on why you may or may not have your Starlink currently, and finally I did a Starlink video detailing how much it costs and when you pay and how you pay for it. Anyway, let's get back to mounting this Starlink dish on the roof. The first thing to figure out is which mount or which type of mount the Starlink cell is best for you in your current situation. So, depending on how your house is and also how you wish to mount your Starlink, you can purchase the correct mount inside the Starlink store. If you don't have your Starlink yet, but you do have an account and the store isn't there, don't worry, it becomes available after you actually get your Starlink shipped to you. As soon as you're told your Starlink is en route to you, it will unlock the Starlink store for you. In my case, I don't have a shingled roof, so the best adapter for me was the pipe adapter. So I purchased it right away and it took about one week to arrive here on site. Now all that you get is the adapter itself, so you will need a bar and potentially an H bracket in order to attach it to your roof. One thing to note is with the pipe adapter, the bar that you're going to connect it to can't be any more than two and a half inches in diameter. I think mine was about two and a quarter. So let's take a look at what's in the box. So in the box you have a little rolled up bag. This is actually a carrier bag for bringing your Starlink up to the roof. Uh, then you have the adapter itself. Uh, nice build quality, very heavy. Next uh, are your screws and some tacks for the wiring. Um, uh, but to go back to the screws, Starlink has designed the adapter to fit six screws, each of them to be screwed in even and somewhat pinch the bar in the middle to secure it. Now guys, obviously boring a hole through the whole adapter and bolting it up or even welding it will be a little bit more secure in theory, but that's not how it is designed by Starlink. Now obviously I can't advise you to do something like that because it can void warranties, etc. And when you are looking for Starlink support, they may not be able to help you if you have tampered or changed their products. So guys, as you can see here is the adapter being fitted to the bar. Keep it as evenly as humanly possible to ensure maximum strength. You can only kind of see it here, but the screws are really, really pinching into the bar. It felt extremely strong uh, when it was all done. Finally, before heading up the ladder, there are three small tips I want to give you here. And the first one is, these screws may rust over time. So we did actually cover these screws with a little bit of grease after we had screwed them into the bar. And that would help to provide some protection from the rain. My second tip here is that the Starlink snap lock is not the tightest. You've probably noticed a small rattle in your Starlink tripod already when you're just using the regular uh, tripod that comes with it. So to keep this from happening, what we did is we actually used a little bit of insulating tape to tape up the whole area around the snap lock and where it meets the actual dish. So this will obviously minimize the amount of rattle you may have where the dish meets the adapter and also it will provide more water protection. My third tip here is to make sure your bar is long enough to go as high as you need but also have the equivalent length underneath the bracket to achieve a nice balance. Also, we placed our Starlink on this side of the house, not just because it's a little bit more discreet and better looking on this side, but also most of our winds come from the southwest, so the house itself will be blocking some of the bigger winds that may or may not arise. So if that is something you want to take into consideration, then please feel free. Now, I don't recommend installing the dish in this sort of weather, but the guy I had come and installed the dish itself is very used to working in these types of conditions and uh, he was more than happy to go up. I will also link his contact details in the description below. I'm in uh, County Clare in Ireland, so if you're in that locality, uh, he's very happy to uh, put up your Starlink dish as well. He's been doing a few of them and obviously more and more over time. So first of all, as you can see guys, the H bracket goes on. I'll link one of these below in the description, uh, but you can get your own. Just make sure you get high enough quality gear for this type of install. It's not worth having something fall on something or someone. So please don't spare any expense when it comes to this kind of equipment. It really does need to be rock solid. Next, the Starlink dish, the adapter, and the bar it's connected to are all screwed into that bracket. Next, we bore through the wall into the attic. 
As you can see from the outside on the left hand side of our bracket, we have a little vent for our mechanical heat recovery system. And on the right, there's a small little waste water pipe coming off of the same system. So while your wall may look blank and there's not a whole lot going on from the outside, please do go in and check the inside as well and make sure you're coming through in the right place. We ended up going in and out a couple of times just to make sure we were in the right spot in a safe location that we wouldn't hit any other machinery or any sort of wiring or anything like that. So please do be careful. Obviously your installer should install a drip loop of some sort or ensure water can't actually uh, go into your home but if you're doing it yourself do ensure some sort of drip loop. Alternatively when you're drilling in through your wall drill at a slight upward angle so that rainwater can't follow in through the wall. Also, I would say to be very strategic where you want to bring your cables. The cable that goes from your Starlink dish to your PoE injector is 100 foot in length. So you shouldn't have much trouble. Now, when we were building this house, I actually put a Cat6 cable running from the attic uh, where the Starlink would be and running down to my office downstairs. So I just need to drill in through the wall uh, with the Starlink and I can plug straight into my PoE injector right there and then my exit from the PoE injector goes straight into the CAT6 I have in the attic and runs straight down to the router in my office. Another quick tip that might sound a little bit obvious but is really really important is when you're coming through the wall with that wire after having bored your hole in make sure that you tape up the end of the RJ cable that's being pushed through the wall first to avoid any sort of dust or any sort of debris getting in there. They're really, really sensitive plugs and you can end up damaging them. And a lot of people have ended up damaging those little RJ plugs on the end of the Starlink cable. So with that all done, it was time to plug in and check the performance. Now, a lot of people in other videos I've done recently have said, oh, I can't wait to see what happens when you put your Starlink up on your roof and if there's a performance boost or anything like that. Well, the truth is I wasn't really expecting too much of a boost. Uh, because where I had the Starlink, it was kind of placed okay. It was facing south to uh, a satellite nearby and we were having 250, 300 meg downloads uh, and that. So with the Starlink satellite being so far away and my roof being approximately eight meters tall, I didn't think there would be a huge difference in performance. And I was actually right. It was a little bit higher, nothing crazy at all. The main reasons I installed Starlink um, obviously is for clear field of view, which it kind of had already, but this guarantees it. And also really one of the big things for me was that the dish is now up and out of the way. Um, nobody can trip over a cable or sever a cable or drive over it or anything like that. It's now up on the side of the house and that's it, it's done. And the second reason was currently my Starlink here in the west of Ireland is pointing south the majority of the time because that's where the Starlink satellites happen to be. Uh, but now that it's up high enough, it has a full 360 view. And if it did need to face north and connect to a satellite in that direction, then now it can do so freely. So guys, I hope you found value in that video. I hope you learned something. Um, and I was really, really happy and excited to document how uh, we got the Starlink up on uh, the house. And I'm really, really relieved that it's up there now and that the uh, dishy is more safe than it ever was. A lot of my recent videos have been very Starlink heavy. And the reason is I'm getting a lot of great questions in my comments area and I end up making videos on those to answer those questions. So guys, if you have any questions or anything, please do pop them uh, below in the comment section. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, uh, I'd really, really appreciate it. We're almost at 5,000 uh, subscribers on the channel and uh, at 5,000 subscribers, I'll probably do a giveaway or something like that. Um, maybe I'll uh, buy some of the adapters off the Starlink store and, uh, and give them away or something like that. Um, if you like that, then please do say so in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Oh,